Hey friends, it's Kathy Sikolik here with you today again. And today my guest is Austin Foss and he's with Mutual of, Mor of Omaha and he's a mortgage lender. So we're gonna talk to him about uh, what it takes to get a loan and buy a house and maybe some misconceptions that people might have about the home buying process. Hey Austin. Hey Kathy, thanks for having me. Really happy to be here. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about uh, Mutual of Omaha first. So Mutual of Omaha has been around for over a hundred years. We started out um, as a company, mostly just doing insurance. So, you know, home insurance, auto insurance, stuff like that. And then we branched off into mortgages, you know, 50, 60, 70 years ago before I was walking the earth. Um, and, you know, huge company. I think it's very good because it bridges the gap between a very small company that maybe doesn't have as much capital behind it and a big, 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 huge you know, quote unquote, big box lender, you know, like the big banks that you see. And, you know, for example, like Chase, Wells Fargo, something like that. It's kind of in the middle. So I think we're very, very fortunate as far as that goes. Um, everything is done in-house as far as underwriting, processing, funding. We are the bank, so we don't have to send it out to six other places for underwriting too. So it's a great, very streamlined process for all of our clients. That's awesome. Um, you know, I have a lot of clients who... Uh, think that the first step in buying a house is going out and looking at properties, but that's not really true, is it? What should they do first? It's not. The first step you always want to take is, is speaking to a lender to at least get an idea of what your realistic price point is. And if there's going to be any sort of obstacles along the way, because that's going to do two things. The first thing it's going to do is help you establish where you need to keep your search. The last thing you want to do is spend time looking at a house that's going to be 325000 if in the end you can only get approved for a house that's 275000 You're just literally spinning your wheels, wasting your time, you know? Um, and the second thing that speaking to a lender does is it gives you a timeline. You know, some people, you know, they have great credit. That's a W-2 job for the last five plus years, 20% in the bank. You can go look at a house tomorrow, be good to go. But sometimes you have other things where... Maybe there's something with your credit. Maybe it's the type of income that you have where if you speak to a lender, um, the lender can let you know like, hey, here's what's going to happen. Um, here's kind of your timeline for purchasing, whether it's two months, two weeks, two years, what have you. It gives you a game plan to be able to buy. And that's the most important thing. Yeah, I think that's a good point too. Like a lender doesn't want to turn people away. And if possible, they can figure out a way to make a loan work for each individual client. Yep, because there's no, mortgages are not one size fits all. They're probably the furthest thing from that. Um, every, literally every situation is different. Um, yeah. And so speaking with a professional, uh, rather than trying to self-diagnose your own situation um, is helpful and it's free, right? We don't, we don't charge anything for it, so. Yep, exactly. So what kind of documents uh, need to be provided to a lender to kind of get that pre-qualification letter for when we do go out and look at properties? Sure. So a lot of it depends on the type of income that you receive. So like Kathy, for example, you're a realtor, so you're self-employed, right? So um, a lot a lot of times with that, it's based off of tax returns, how you file your taxes, um, you know, net versus gross, all these things like that. And when you're self-employed, it's very important to speak with a lender to see what you qualify for because it's different, right? You're not going into you not know, going into work from eight to five every day or nine to five and log it, you know, punching your time clock every day. So that's important. Now, if you are working for a company, you're a W-2 employee, um, it's, it's pretty basic. It's basically, you know, have 30 days of pay stubs on the ready, have your W-2s ready as well, because that lets the, that lets the lender say it's me know, okay, here's how much you make gross. Here's how much income we can use for you, you know, because there's certain guidelines that, that are related to bonuses or overtime or commissions or stuff mm -hmm. like that, then you want to make sure to have that stuff reviewed up front because the last thing you want to say happen is, oh, I'm planning on using my bonus or my overtime to qualify and then it's not usable and then you're kind of high and dry. And so those are the main things along with bank statements um, to prove that you have the money available um, for the down payment. So a lot of times that's, that's the gist of it. Um, and then obviously from there kind of branches off into different things based on, um, scenarios or stuff like that. Yeah, that makes sense. And then the process for a loan generally is about 30 days, right? From when we execute a contract to when we can close. 
Yep, 30 days is, is generally what we say. So we can um, get it done faster. Sometimes, you know, there's there's a lot of other variables that come into it. You know, there's the appraisal, you know, appraisers right now are just crazy busy just with everybody refinancing and, and you know, people are trying to take advantage of the crazy low interest rates when they're buying, you know, and so there's just not always enough appraisers to get it done in, in five days, you know, so sometimes that can be a delay, but even with that, you know, 30 days is, is typically plenty of time from, like you said, the day the contract is executed to the day that you're, you know, sitting at the title company, you know, matched up and, and signing all the documents. So yeah, that's, that's about what I say is 30 days. Mm -hmm. And I think some people forget too, uh, the importance of keeping your credit stable once you go into contract. A hundred percent. That's a, that's an issue that I've seen a couple of times come up where, you know, you get pre-approved based on where your credit is right now, because when you, we, we, when we review your credit, it's not just your credit score, right? It's always important to have a good credit score, but it's also the liabilities that you have. You know, do you have a car payment, student loans, credit cards, things like that. If we pre-approve you for a certain price and you say, oh, great, I'm going to go out and get a new car because I know I'm pre-approved for a house. Well, there's a very good possibility that that new car payment that you're going to incur is going to affect what you then qualify for, um, you know, for the mortgage. And so mm -hmm. what I always tell people is, hey, are you planning on getting, an, are you planning on getting anything? Please say no. If you are, you need to tell me first. You, you might be able to, but you need to tell me first because this is a huge investment that you're making. You don't want to just, you know, be like, oh, I'll be fine. And then you're not fine. So um, yeah, I would always try to keep your credit as consistent from when we first talk about it as possible. And if something's going to change, just say so, and, and we can kind of figure it out from there. Yeah. Yeah. It's always a good plan. Yeah. So what other advice would you give to folks that are um, maybe nervous about diving into the, to the home search? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a big search, right? It's always a big first step when you're purchasing your first home. Um, we did it uh, about 17 months ago now at this point. Um, so I've kind of seen it from helping people purchase. Most of my clients are first time buyers to me purchasing my first house. Right. And really, honestly, thank you. Um, really, honestly, the first step is speaking to a lender, right? You don't, like I said, you don't want to pre-qualify yourself because if you do, you're going to go into it with this mindset of, okay, I make this, I should qualify for that. Yeah. Well, maybe there's this, maybe there's a payment that you make that you're not taking into account, something like that. And it's not something that should take, you know, three, four, five, six days. If it's something complicated, then yeah, there's a chance that it could take that long, right? If there's a lot of, a lot of jobs or a lot of this, a lot of that, mm -hmm. for the most part, it's a pretty straightforward conversation. It's basically a math problem. And Th that's that's the first step is just having that conversation with somebody that's trustworthy um, and somebody that you can you know feel like you can kind of give the information to because really in the end we don't we don't want to start you know gathering your blood type and your all these other things right we just want to be mm -hmm. able to follow the guidelines and, and kind of help you help you buy a house right and so we're anything that we ask for for example is just because we have to if it was up to me and up to the company we would probably just be like oh cool you know you've been at the job for six years what do you make all right great here you go here's your keys right but mm -hmm. um fortunately it's not the case so you know the best thing you can do um is just have a chat with the reputable lender you know whether it's mm -hmm. me or anybody else and you know just just get that ball rolling because once you get that ball rolling you know basically how i see it is you figure out what you're approved for uh, one misconception that i see a lot is that with mortgages you're trying to get approved for a certain house right a two hundred and fifty thousand dollar house a three hundred and thirteen thousand dollar house it's not the case you're getting approved for a certain monthly payment right so you're approved for a eighteen hundred dollar monthly payment a twenty two hundred dollar monthly payment okay so with the down payment that you're planning on putting down, let's see what that looks like. So then you know what to expect. Um, right. You know, then you're not worried about being outside of your means. You know what you're looking for. So you have that. Then you have your price point. Then you can go to your realtor and say, okay, here is my price point, and here is the area I'm looking for, and, and all that kind of stuff. That helps you, Kathy, the realtor, because now you're your search has been narrowed down significantly because you're not just 
looking all over kingdom come yeah you know where that max point is and that just makes the whole process a lot more efficient it sure does yeah nobody wants to just waste their time looking at houses or falling in love with a house that then they can't mm -hmm. qualify for that's the worst yeah i've seen that a ton where people whether they're inquiring online or, or what have you they're like i love this house i want to qualify for it and then if they if if they can't if, if it just can't happen without a co-signer and paying off debt and all these other things then they may just be turned off to the whole process altogether right so sometimes it's just that one right and there's always going to be a better one but that's that's hard to believe unless you're like us and we've been in this long enough to see that come to fruition yeah yeah it can be a tough process um well, great. I think I think we've got some really great information for for folks who are a little nervous about dipping their toes in the water. So, mm -hmm. thanks for spending some time with me, Austin. Yeah, always happy to. And you know, if if y'all ever have questions, and I'd love to be able to just answer those. It's not even as much of a numbers thing. It's just an advisory role. It is kind of my goal, and Kathy, I know it's your goal as well, is yep. to just be able to advise more than anything else. So yeah, and we'll put Austin's info in this video so that everybody can reach out to, the, to him just for any questions you might have. Uh, both of us are always here for, for resources, any sort of questions you might have. So don't ever Absolutely. reach out. I concur. Yeah. Well, thanks so much, Austin. Thanks, Kathy. Take care. Yeah, you too. Have a great day. Yeah, you too. Hey friends, it's Kathy Sikolik here again, but right now I've got a friend of mine, Jay Haley, with me today, and we're going to talk a little bit about what it was like when he bought a house. So hey, Jay, how's it going? Good, good. How are you doing today? Well, thank you. Excellent. Yeah, so so you moved. Um, you're no longer in Austin near me, which is sad. You took your wife with you. That's okay. Um, I know you get to be around other family, but that's cool. Um, so, so you guys didn't think you could buy a house when you moved up there? No, um, you know, we're artists and, you know, day job artists. And as time has gone on, you know, you just don't really feel that, you know, you, you're kind of stuck in a rental world. You may not have rental credit, uh, uh, just past credit. You might not have any history of credit. Or like myself, I made some mistakes back when I was in college, which was a long time ago. And yeah, um, we all, we yeah. all have, yeah. I, I feel as if we were house searching for about six years, just kind of pretending we could, but never really believed we could. And ultimately it came down to it kind of a stroke of luck that my um, you know, HR department at work brought in a lender to talk to all of us. And it just really kind of made me understand kind of how important a lender was to help begin the process. I always was thinking realtor, 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 but then every house has a realtor and then you have a, your own realtor and then you know, and then they're not really the money people. So, you know, it, it seemed like a, an odd, you know, the place that you needed to start, but didn't feel comfortable as the place to start, um, which I, I don't think that that's totally wrong. It's just more, we didn't, you know, run into the realtor. And I'm assuming in the same way that my boss introduced us to a lender, a realtor can introduce somebody to a lender. And um, so, you know, but it was a long time after that, even that, that talk and finally I just one day was you know I, let's reach out and we reached out and she came over and chatted with us and we realized that even just with one of our credit line and not both of us together we were able to you know afford within a certain area and we did have to move out a little bit further but ultimately even moving in and I think we could have afforded more mm -hmm. you know, closer to town when I say in you know um, closer to the more expensive area versus less expensive area yeah. Um, even in there, it's like the cost would have been more than we'd want to want to afford right. a month. And so, you know, so we wanted to look down a little bit and wanted a little bit more space anyway. And it, 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 it was interesting because we wouldn't have necessarily chosen where we, where we landed, but it's perfect. You know, the, how the, I really feel that's where a realtor came in and she really read us and really helped us figure out, you know, which house fit, fit with us and, and kind of without really edging us on, on this one was like, you know, she's like, this looks like a forever house, you know, some little line like that. And um, I'm here. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, there's definitely a partnership with um, with buying a house between a lender and uh, a realtor that it's kind of a two, a team that helps you can't do one without the other, really. It, it came really handy. The lender um, 
um, introduced us to a realtor and and we ran with her and, and and she she was great and and really that first introduction with the the lender you know it's interesting because i felt like it, she was she was a big corporation but it really was just a person who not only wants us to buy a house yeah. but wants us to be successful in owning a house yeah. so you know isn't about just you know like just trying to you know sell isn't it's it's not like buying a used car you know or a new car or anything you know it's it's not like it's like it's gone you know it's like they're, they're putting a big investment and they're, they're a part of it and they want you to be able to stick be able to stick with it so they're gonna they're gonna kind of help you find the right money sources for it and then once you felt like you had those money sources and had a range in it then it was walking around with a realtor and, and, and shopping was was suddenly just a no-brainer so yeah, it's so interesting that people forget, like people just forget or don't don't know that a lender is really one of the first steps that you have to have to take. Um, but any any realtor can hook you up with with their favorite lenders and people that they've worked with that they're they know are solid. So like Austin in the first part of this segment. So it's a good dude too. He would have taken care of really good care of you guys had you been in Austin. But what? Well, the, the great thing about one of us only doing one of our credit is that the next time around we could go the other way because the other one you know it's yep. time, time and investment and everything is you know coming together and you know it's it's wonderful in a home i tell you the first night that i hung out here just to strip walls of wallpaper being a long time renter I didn't realize there was a feeling that I had been missing. It was like when that sound gets turned off that you didn't realize the sound was on and it was bugging you the whole time. And then it turns off and you're like, oh, the sense of relief. Well, it was like that. There was this sense of home that I had not had since I lived with my parents that I didn't realize was this like, kind of like sense of place that was missing. It was almost like this, this negative sound. And then I just sat there and I was in the space and I was, it was like quiet. It was peaceful again. It was, it was really nice. Yeah. 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 Taking that step was, was awesome for us. Mm, it's such a great story. And anybody who thinks that they can't do it, you'd almost always be surprised. It's such a great story, Jay. I really want to thank you for sharing it with us today. Oh, thank you for giving me an opportunity. I like sharing things. <laughs> <laughs> we like hearing from you. All right. Have a good night. Jay. Later. Bye-bye.